Welcome to the Living Word. A ministry of Bethel Baptist Church located in the Greenfield, Indiana. The message today is brought to you by our pastor, Dr. Randall Parker. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the service that's already in progress. Take your Bible and turn to 1 John chapter 1, if you would. Dr. Halcombe's Sunday school lesson, the choir song, Michael's song, just all goes together this morning as we bring a thought that I feel so inadequate to preach. There's some things, no matter how long you've handled the Word of God, how much you've stood in the pulpit, you feel so reverent about that you feel just inadequate to approach. 1 John chapter 1, let's read beginning in verse 3. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we've heard of Him, and declare unto you that God is light, And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. I want to preach on the subject this morning, the blood of Jesus Christ. There isn't anything more sacred to think on, to talk on, to preach on than the blood of Jesus Christ. There isn't anything that Satan uh, hates worse than the preaching and the mentioning of the blood of Jesus Christ. He hates that worse than he does music. He hates it worse than he does prayer. He hates it worse than anything because that is the thing that destroyed him was the blood of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray and let the Lord speak to our hearts. And I want you to listen intently this morning, not for the presentation or the personality in the message, but with the understanding that the blood of Jesus Christ is the only thing that will keep you out of hell. If you listen this morning, you're going to have opportunity to gain some understanding that maybe you didn't have when you came this morning. God is going to shed some additional light on some truths that you are aware of, but maybe has not moved you like it will today. What a responsibility you're going to have when you leave here this morning because you said, not under my preaching, but under the Word of God that tells us about the blood of the only begotten, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father, what a responsibility I feel, God, to do my best. And God, how at the same time I feel so inadequate. So Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would take over in my stead and give me that strength that I do not have, that your strength would be made perfect in my weakness. And God, that this morning, Lord, the message would be clear as a bell. And God, speak to our hearts, not so much our ears, but our hearts. And Lord, if there's somebody here this morning that's without Christ, the blood of Christ never applied to their life, I pray that today would be their day. 
God, if there's those here that are walking a guilty distance from God, having been forgiven, having been cleansed, having been changed, and yet God walking at a guilty distance, I pray, God, that this morning the Word of God would touch their hearts also. Lord, for those that are discouraged and defeated, God may be facing a great challenge. I pray that they might see, God, what the blood of Christ has done in their life. And God, if you will do that for us, there's nothing you would withhold from us. So speak to our hearts now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give you what God spoke to my heart about, some description of the blood of Jesus Christ. All right? The first thing I mention is this. The blood of Christ is precious blood. It's precious. It's precious. Now, we throw that term around pretty loosely, okay? We call this precious and that precious. I preached for a fellow one time and stayed in his home a week, and he had a cat. And the name of the cat was Precious. Can I tell you something? The cat was not precious. <laughs> we use that term pretty loosely. But if you'll study the Word of God, God is very conservative about what He uses the term precious to describe. Amen. The word precious means of highest of cost. There isn't anything in this universe more precious of more value than the blood of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ shed his blood, he could not have gone to the diamond mines of the world, to the ruby mines of the world, to the pearl oceans and gathered it all and poured it out and it would have been far inferior in value to the blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary. Amen. When the Bible talks about precious stones, you know, uh, he, he, he describes uh, uh, things that are in our efforts that will be rewarded and he talks about uh, gold and silver and, and precious stones. Uh, he, he's saying that, that, that uh, there's going to be things in our life that God is going to hold very, very dear and very precious. There are going to be things that are insignificant, but there's going to be things that he can do through us that he even calls precious. Amen. And, and you, you, you understand, he understands that that word is, is saying there isn't anything greater. Amen. Nothing could have been done greater for you than that Jesus did on the cross. He shed his blood. Listen to what 1 Peter 1.19 says. But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Now, the previous verse is introducing us and saying it's not by the blood of bulls and goats. It's not by the blood of animal sacrifices that, that we're forgiven, that, that, that we're saved. It's not that, but, but through the precious blood of Christ. Now, you've got to understand this. The blood of Christ, one of the things that makes it so precious, so costly, of such value, is that there is no other blood like it in all of creation. Amen. Amen. I was thinking uh, some time ago about children, and you look at uh, brothers and sisters or two brothers or whatever, and one child can be tall and skinny with black hair, the other child can be short and chubby with blonde hair. Now, I'm not describing anybody in particular. And you look at them and say, how can from the same parents you have a tall, skinny one and a short, chubby one from the same parent? Because there was not just one parent contributing to those genes. Why didn't both of them look exactly like one of the parents, because there was two parents. They had the mixed blood of two, not the blood of one. Jesus Christ had no earthly mother. Amen. 
He had no earthly mother. He was the son of God. He had no earthly father. He was the son of God. There was no mixture of genes. He was the son of his heavenly father and the son of nothing else. His blood is precious. It's costly. It's unique. There's nothing that will substitute for it. Amen. The uh, uh, people who receive and give blood at the hospitals, they tell me if uh, there's not enough blood, there's plasma and other things that possibly can be substituted uh, uh, to help you. But in your salvation experience, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord didn't supply a substitute way. It's precious blood. The second thing I want to mention to you is this, and, and this is where sometimes we separate ourselves from liberals. Are you listening to me? His blood is incorruptible blood. I want you to turn back in your Bible just a little bit to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, just a few pages back in your Bible, and read with me if you would. Hebrews chapter 10. Several verses. I didn't copy them down because I want you to read them with me. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, talking about the first covenant, that he may establish the second, talking about the covenant of the blood of Christ, by which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. What does that say? Please read it. Once for all. Amen. And every priest, speaking of the former covenant, every priest standeth daily ministering the offerings, oft times the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Listen to this. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. One offering perfecting them forever that are sanctified. Can I tell you, if you come to this altar this morning and you by faith in simple childlike trust Ask God to forgive you and save you. The same effectual blood, incorruptible blood of Jesus Christ will, will cleanse you and save you just like the first person after Jesus died. Amen. Why? His blood is incorruptible. Amen. It's not the blood of other animals and goats, and so forth. It's not the blood of the creation. It is the blood of the Creator. Thank God for that. It's incorruptible. You say, Preacher, I'm not sure if I were to come today that there's enough power in all the world to save me. I don't know if there's enough forgiveness in all the world to take care of my sin. Can I tell you, the blood of Jesus Christ took care of your sin when Jesus died. And it's still incorruptible. It's still on that altar where Jesus Christ himself placed it. And this morning, you can come and I can promise you the blood is still powerful. It's still effective. It still cleanses. It has not lost one whit of its power not one whit uh, of its potential. The blood of Jesus Christ is just exactly the same as the day he shed it. You say, preacher, that's just not uh, a reasonable thinking. That's not common sense. Can I tell you, I'm not talking about something common. Amen. I'm talking about something supernatural. Amen. The blood of Christ. It's incorruptible. Can you imagine 
when the Bible says there that this, the priests offer these sacrifices daily, can you imagine the cleanup that had to be done? Can you imagine the, the corruption that had to go on when, when life's blood out of an animal is being uh, poured out? Can, can you imagine that? But can I tell you this? There wasn't one drop of Jesus' blood left on Calvary. The Bible says he presented it to the mercy seat and God himself was satisfied with the sacrifice that he made. Amen. And let me help you folks that just cannot accept once you're saved, you're always saved. I read to you that he made one offering for all time. Once and forever. The Bible says in, in Hebrews that if, uh, if it were possible for us to fall from that grace, it would be impossible to renew us to salvation again because Christ would have to come and re repeat that same death all over again. He's not going to do it. He did it once and for all to sanctify those that trust him forever. Amen. I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on him. Amen. He did it forever. And can I tell you something? I needed it. I needed a blood that would take care of me forever. Because I couldn't take care of myself. The Lord could have forgiven me and paid for all of my past sins. And if he hadn't have paid for my future sins at the same time, I couldn't have stayed saved three hours. Amen. And some of y'all wouldn't have made it ten minutes. Amen. His blood is incorruptible blood. Get that thought and doctrine into your head. It's incorruptible. That that changed me did not come from within me. That that changed me came from without. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood is incorruptible blood. The third thing I've written down, his blood has transforming power. Now, now you, you could receive these two things that we've already mentioned and gladly say, I would count it precious. I, preacher, I wouldn't argue that point whatsoever, surely the blood of Jesus had to be precious. I would count it as incorruptible. I wouldn't argue with you that the blood of the Son of God was not blood of another human, wasn't blood of an animal sacrifice. It was unique blood, and, and it is incorruptible. I would, I would grant you that. But the thing maybe you have not understood is that that blood of Jesus Christ, that incorruptible precious blood can transform your life. There isn't anything else in this world can transform your life. You so preacher, I know some uh, halfway houses and get over at clubs and get out of it clubs and they help and I, I didn't say that. I, I'm not arguing that point. There's, there's a, a psychological helps that may help you quit smoking, may help you quit drinking, all that. But can I tell you this? They, they, none of them are going to get you in heaven. Amen. Amen. None of them are going to get you in heaven. Through the blood of Jesus Christ is the only thing that can transform your life. Others can make you a better husband, and some of you need a dose. Some things can make you a better wife. I'm not going to say a word about that. <laughs> there are things that can make you a better teenager, make you a better person to live with in the home. All those lessons can be learned. But there is nothing that can change you from being a sinner to a saint but the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen to what the Bible says. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the firstborn, first begotten of the dead, and to the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. He washed us from our sins. 
He did not camouflage our sins. Amen. Now, camouflage is good, but it doesn't change the person. Amen. Camouflage, you, you, you ladies that are so hard down on hunters wearing camouflage, what do you think makeup is? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Can I get a witness on that? Amen. Amen. If they were honest, they would say, Mary Kay, the camouflage capital of the world. And you know what? Listen to me. I'm for it. <laughs> Amen. I've often, I've often said, if the barn needs paint and glory to God, paint it. And I'm glad you can look better on the outside. I'm glad you have a desire to look better on the outside. I'm glad you're mindful of it. But while you're looking good for everybody else, you remember something, that God's not looking at the camouflage. And the only thing that can wash you, the only thing that can wash you and take away your sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. The other day I parked in a restaurant, and I'll not tell you where it was at, but not noticing where I was parking. But there was crab trees around the edge of the parking lot. And those crab apples, while I was in the restaurant, some dropped off and hit on the car. And when I come out, there was those Little crab apples rotten and laying around on the car. And I thought, oh, man, that's awful. So I went to the car wash. And you know what? The car wash took the apples off the car. But the stain where they were was still there. And you know what the Lord said? You can take the apples off, but the stain stays. Only the blood of Jesus Christ takes the stain off. Amen. Amen. Oh, you can get cleaned up and you, you can quit this and you can smell better and you can stop that and, and, and you, you need to do the... But only the blood of Christ can take the stain off. Amen. His blood is transforming power. Fourthly, His blood has preserving power. Preserving power. When God does that work through His blood, not through some other precious agent, but through His blood, the work of the blood of Jesus Christ is eternally accomplished. You will never have to go through the blood of Christ again. Amen. Have you ever been so discouraged and defeated and maybe so distant from God that you just wish you could get saved again? You ever been there? You say, preacher, I've never been like that. Well, I'm glad. But sometimes that's where we are. And we come to God and God says, the blood did its work. Now what I've got to do is wash you through the word so you'll be clean again. Amen. When Simon Peter came to the Lord and the disciples were round about and, and, and the Lord said, Simon, I'm going to wash your feet. He said, no, you're not. He said, yes, I am. And then he said, no, you're not. And the Lord said, yes, I am because if you are in disobedience to me, you have no part with me. And he said, oh, Lord, I, I didn't mean it that way. I was just reverently telling you how unworthy I No, wash me all over and Jesus said, Simon, man, you're stupid. You don't need to be washed all over. You've been cleansed. You just need your feet washed that's come in contact with this word. Are you listening to me? 
I'm so glad. Listen to what the Bible says. We don't want to skip that. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Amen. His blood preserves. It's not about your worthiness. It's not about your goodness. It's not about God looked down in time and, and saw that you were going to be a good uh, 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 Christian the rest of your life and you was never going to embarrass him and you was never going to drop the ball and, and so he saved you. No, no. He looked down through there and saw every sin you'd ever commit and every way in which you'd fail him, every way in which you'd uh, 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 turn again. And he saved you with eternal salvation. Now listen to me. And then he deals with you as a child. And when you disobey him, he's got ways of correcting that. Preacher, you're just preaching the salvation that once you get saved, you can do anything you want to. Amen. I can do anything I want to. Drink all the liquor I want to. Gamble all I want to. But when God saved me, he saved my want-tos. Amen. And now when I get out of my Christian element and my Christian experience and my Christian grace, when I, when I uh, 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 fail God, he deals with me as a redeemed child. And he will punish. He will scourge. But the blood of Jesus Christ hath cleansed us from sin, having obtained eternal redemption. I'm glad I'm not on probation. Amen. I'm probably speaking to 15 people that's on probation right now. I'm glad that God is not watching, waiting for me to make a mistake and say, okay, now you'll serve out your sentence. No. He's given me strength to walk under his direction and in his power. And when I fail, he does not disown me. Amen. He does not reverse the effects of the blood of his son. He deals with me as a child. And if anybody is without correction, the Bible says, I'm a child of God.